Up first, Lieutenant Governor Molly Gray. She campaigned and started this new leadership role during the pandemic and led the Senate gavel to gavel virtually. But as we start to claw our way back to normalcy, she says there is still a lot more work to be done. Lieutenant Governor Molly Gray, thanks so much for coming on NBC5 In Depth. Thank you so much for having me. Great to be in studio. Well, we have to start with the, the big news this week. Vermont becoming the first state in the nation to reach the 80% vaccinated goal. All state restrictions now lifted. What kind of went through your mind when you heard about that? I've been thinking so much about Vermonters, gosh, for the last um, five or six months since being in office, but over the last year, just getting around the state. And it turns out Vermonters like to come together and do really hard things, right? It's part of our legacy as a state. But I think this is a moment and a real testament to our communities, um, our vaccination clinics, and especially vaccination clinics um, in more populated areas led by BIPOC leaders across the state. But Vermont's come together. Vermont's been really selfless. And yeah, we can sort of show the nation that um, it's possible to get 80% vaccinated. And it's just wonderful to be able to see faces again, um, be able to take the mask off. So I just, gosh, my heart goes out to our state and I feel so proud um, of all the work we've done. Yeah, and, and there's still a long road to go though in terms of recovery and, and things of that nature. You're gonna be checking in on things around the state this summer. Tell us what you have planned. So there's so much that we know, right? We know that COVID's uh, exposed a lot of challenges in the state, be it access to housing, access to internet, right? We know that broadband now is so critical for telehealth, for online learning. Uh, my goodness, a shout out to all the teachers and students finishing up school this week. Um, it's critical for uh, remote work, right? Uh, we know that Vermont, in order to be a thriving, uh, innovative, welcoming, uh, economically successful place in the future needs to have broadband internet. But more than anything, there's a lot we don't know. We don't know all the lessons learned from this pandemic, things our community's done. Um, we don't know uh, areas where we need to make really, really critical investments in other ways, you know, be it around uh, childcare or paid family and medical leave, which I'm happy to talk about. So this summer, uh, starting in Rutland, I will be in communities, listening, engaging, and just hearing directly from Vermonters about how we should spend the rest of the American Rescue Plan money. We have a lot more left. I think we spent uh, 600 million of the 2.7 billion that came to the state and um, how we can make sure our budget is aligned with our values and our greatest needs moving forward. Yeah. Well, you campaigned and started um, your, your tenure in a pandemic, the session gavel to gavel was was over zoom what are some of the accomplishments you you think came of this year's session and maybe some things you you wish would have gotten done that didn't well first things first there's no playbook for a pandemic legislative session i was in the building every day uh, in the lieutenant governor's office with my chief of staff in an empty state house for all intents and purposes the pro tem was there sometimes as the speaker as well and obviously staff um, but up there at the dais in the Senate chamber with the gavel, um, gaveling in and then looking at all the senators on a big Zoom screen. Uh, and that makes it really hard, right? It makes it really hard to see people, to have those conversations um, that are really important. I think especially in Vermont, we really pride ourselves on engaging, on direct democracy. But uh, I think one of the lessons learned and one thing I feel really proud about is we brought um, hundreds of Vermonters into the State House virtually. Uh, every other week we did what's called a seat at the table and I'll continue to do it next session. Um, focus on broadband, focused on our tax increment financing and our downtowns, uh, focus on the economic well-being of women, focus on food security. We brought farmers into the State House and the ability to use the tools that we have to create more access to our Vermont democracy at a time when we need Vermonters to go back to the table. We need Vermonters at the table. So I feel proud of that work. Um, we'll continue to do that. And I think there are a lot of accomplishments also just coming out of the legislature. Again, um, investments in broadband, although I still think we have to address immediate need right now. You know, investments in childcare, investments in higher education, and workforce development. We know we have so many employers who are struggling to find workers, um, but there's a lot of work yet to be done. Um, in terms of your predecessor, the former Lieutenant Governor David Zuckerman, uh, in the 
later months of last year in, in talking about the, the handling of the pandemic, he had said that he was excluded from the Scott administration and, and kind of the, the handling of everything. Um, what's your relationship been like with the Scott administration and how are you feeling about that so far? I can't really speak to the prior lieutenant governor and his relationship, but I took a lot of time coming you know, before officially taking office to meet with all the secretaries um, and commissioners to have one-on-one -on -one conversations so that the moment I was sworn in, we could hit the ground running. And then the same has been true with the governor. Um, so we meet every other week, uh, part of our, I was have been part of the regular SEOC briefings, the um, security operations, uh, security emergency operations center for the state, uh, and just being there, being there to help amplify um, the work of the administration on the vaccination effort, on COVID relief. So it's been a good relationship. We don't agree on everything, but I think we put politics and party aside and really focused on doing good work for the state. Well, it's been a few months now that you've been in this role and outside of the session, um, the, the Lieutenant Governor role is really what you make of it. What are you hoping to um, accomplish as we are getting more back to normal things opening up? Well, I think the first question is, what is normal, right? We don't really know. Maybe we don't want to go back to the way things were, but we have an opportunity to re-envision how we want things to be in Vermont. And that's why I ran for office. We, we struggled to keep young people here. We have more deaths than births in a majority of Vermont counties. We have a persistent demographic crisis. So I hope um, coming out of this pandemic, we focus on recovering stronger. We're listening to Vermonters. We're focused on getting broadband to every Vermonter in the state as soon as possible. We're focused on childcare so we can keep um, women and working families in the workforce because we can't actually um, have more people leaving the workforce. But we're also for focused on addressing some of these demographic issues. Um, we have to figure out how to keep young people here um, and get people into the good paying jobs that exist in our communities right now. So that will continue to be my focus. And, I also think it's important to have more young people and I'm not young, you know, I'm 37 and that feels pretty old these days, but oh, um, <laughs> to, you know, to keep, um, to keep the next generation excited about what's possible. Well, and, and you, we should mention, you just came back from a trip, an international trip, North Macedonia with the, the National Guard. Tell us what the purpose of that trip was and, and, and how to go. Yeah, a pretty incredible opportunity for a Lieutenant Governor. Um, but I just want to take a moment to kind of I guess take a step back. Yeah. Vermont's had a 28 year long relationship through a state partnership program with North Macedonia, which was previously Macedonia. Um, and we've been helping to train their military, helping to provide training on uh, emergency response and natural disasters, for example. And that's all happened through this incredible partnership that was set up by the Department of State and Department of Defense. I think it's something that a lot of Vermonters don't know about. Um, but our National Guard are, are very much involved in long-term peace and security building. Uh, and now, as we move from a place where Mass North Macedonia, excuse me, has become a member of NATO, is working towards EU membership, um, to take that relationship that was very military to military focused and have it expand to economic cooperation. Because what we know is that coming out of a pandemic, or a conflict or a time of instability, economic security is critical to long-term peace and security. So I spent time on a dairy farm. I also grew up on a dairy farm, so we talked a lot about cows, on a sheep farm, meeting with the Secretary of Agriculture, or the, excuse me, the Minister of Agriculture, uh, meeting with milk producers, I met the President, met the Prime Minister, um, was able to really help our guard um, expand the relationships that we have currently, and then figure out where can we build those partnerships, um, be it with our university and their university, with our extension program and their extension program, uh, so it was an incredible opportunity. I just, I can't um, speak more highly of our guard, the work of Vermonters and communities around the state who have, who are serving and the work that they're doing. It's really special and really unique for Vermont. And I guess maybe part of our legacy in many ways as a state that's always been involved in international cooperation. It sounds like some similarities there between the state and, and that country. What, what were some of the big things that you really walked away with um, that, that'll stick with you? You know, we're a small state in a big country. Um, they're a small country in a big union, the, the you know, soon to be part of the European Union. 
but we have a lot of similarities. Um, We're both struggling to keep young people around. There's a lot of workforce development challenges. Uh, both have economies that are very, very rooted in, in agriculture. Um, similar climate in many ways. And so I think there's a lot of natural synergies and not only sharing best practices, but also learning best practices as we move forward. And, and just to mention the US ambassador there, Ambassador Burns um, was so welcoming, um, knows that Vermont has been this consistent partner for the last 28 years. And to be able to spend a lot of time working with her, getting to know her um, during the mission, I think was really, really important for helping to solidify a long-term relationship. So are you hoping that more leaders will maybe make a trip over there sometime in the future? Yeah, and vice versa. But I also think we're at a time where everything's local, right? International is local, human rights is local, um, security is local. And if we can bring um, North Macedonian farmers to meet with Vermont farmers or um, researchers, extension leaders uh, to our state, I think that's as, much, as valuable as getting you or um, getting our um, secretaries or administration officials there, but really building those relationships at the ground level so they can be sustained and have a real practical um, dialogue. Kind of switching gears a little bit, um, this is a time when so many people are, are thinking about the future and kind of what that holds for, for Vermont. Um, a couple of different news outlets have put out stories recently about the future of Vermont's congressional delegation and both named you as a possible contender if a, a seat were to open up to, to go for it. Um, if one were to open up in the near future, is that something that you would see yourself pursuing? You know, I um, have so much respect for Senator Leahy and Congressman Welch and Senator Sanders, and I think their leadership throughout this pandemic has just been um, incredibly commendable. You know, Vermont wouldn't really be where we are at in terms of American Rescue Plan funds if it wasn't for Senator Leahy. I sincerely hope he runs again. I think we need him in Washington right now. Uh, but one thing I have learned from him is that you don't focus on the next election, you focus on the job that you're doing right now and the job that Vermonters elected you to do. And I feel so honored to serve as Lieutenant Governor. Um, only what five months, six months in, um, and doing my best day in and day out to help us recover. And that's what I'll... I, w I am focused on and will continue to focus on in the months and years ahead. Right. Lieutenant Governor Molly Gray, that's all I've got for you. Thanks so much for coming on NBC5 In Depth. Thank you.